What's up everybody? This is Mr. Second Passport and today we're going to look at why I think you should never invest over $100,000 in Ecuador in a single property, right? Unless you're buying half of Ecuador, then it's different based on personal life experiences of my own. Okay, a couple years back, I think it was 2018, uh, we 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 finished and sold a house on the coast of Ecuador, just south of Manta, and there it is, right there, as you can see in the picture. Here and uh, there's the kitchen, and and what happened? It was me and two partners that no longer live in Ecuador; uh, they have left. Um, uh, that we built this thing from scratch, from the ground up, um, and the construction part went pretty well. But the sale part went really lousy, and it took us like almost two years uh, to sell this property. It has a gorgeous ocean view, a nice wraparound kitchen, bathrooms with bathtubs, you know, the his and hers sink, right? We really did it just how we'd like it in that amazing ocean view that you can get uh, in a lot of places just south of Manta. And uh, you can see there, there's the beach in front. You know, it was a three-bedroom, two-bath house, really, really quite big, 190 square meters, and it was on uh, four different lots that we sold all together. And basically, we were right at, there's the closets there and the doorways, you can see, we were right at the, the limit of what I'm saying today of $100,000, and we it took us over two years to sell it, and we just barely scratched our money back. You know, by the hair of our chinny chin chin, we just barely got our money out. Um, we didn't make anything on the deal, and and we didn't really lose either. We kind of broke even. Uh, so <clears throat> anyway, you know, this was an experience of mine that that I hope you don't have to go through. Uh, <clears throat> and we'll talk about this more on this channel as far as things I learned for the good and bad uh, building this house from scratch and selling it. and But one big thing I learned is, you know what? There's a limit. You know, do not go over a certain price in Ecuador or you will have a big problem selling it. Why? Well, there's, there's no liquidity in countries like Ecuador. Almost none. Mortgage rates are still, even in 2020, 2021, are hovering around 10, 11% annual. Uh, which is pretty crazy high, and it's they're still really hard to qualify for. Foreigners can't, for instance. I've even lived here years and years, and in most banks, I could not qualify. It's super difficult to qualify for these uh, mortgage uh, mortgages locally here in Ecuador. So it's still a very cash market, and there's there's not just not much liquidity. So what does this mean? It it brings me to my first reason why you should not. Okay, buy anything or build anything over a hundred grand in Ecuador, and that's just a rough. You shouldn't even come close to a hundred grand, really. Uh, but that's kind of the li the self-imposed limit I'm saying for the purpose of today's of today's uh, video. So it will take because of the lack of liquidity. The first reason why you should not buy anything in the higher price brackets here is because it will take you a very, very long time to sell. If at all, if you're even lucky, your, your money's basically sunk and you're, you'll be lucky if you get it out without taking a big loss. And what do I mean by long time selling? Like what happened to me? Years. Years. Okay? And as you know with most properties, if they go vacant for years, they start to have problems with plumbing, roofing, all these different things uh, can start happening to you and you'll actually be taking a loss on that property sooner rather than later, even if it's just vacant. Um, the second reason I highly discourage investing over hundred grand in a single property in a country like Ecuador is because there's almost zero price appreciation, which is, it's amazing how that happens, but um, with with property prices going crazy all over the world and in places like the U.S. and Canada, but in in Ecuador there's almost zero price appreciation, especially for those higher priced properties. Uh, definitely something to keep in mind before you buy. The third big reason why I su highly suggest against 
buying higher priced properties in Ecuador is because of the other risks that you come to that you don't see on the surface when you just visit a property and buy it. And that's political risks. Like there's an election coming up next year, 2021 in Ecuador. Not sure how that's going to come out. Uh, neighbor risks, which is even a bigger thing. People here just aren't as respectful as they are in North America for certain things like noise and stuff like that. Um, so if you've lived here in 2020, maybe you haven't had that problem because, because of the COVID thing. People have kind of kept the partying to a minimum. But, you know, neighbors, specifically noise, maybe roosters or dogs, you just don't know until you're living there. So, I mean, I wouldn't invest a lot of money in a property because of these risks. What if you invest a whole bunch of money in a property and then it's unlivable for you because of one of these maybe neighbors you have? Uh, gated community risks that I've covered in different in different video, you know, um, that I'll put in a, a link to in the description. But like, it's very common in Ecuador if you buy in a building or in a gated community, a lot of people just stop paying their dues and then the place goes to shit, basically. Um, and it's a problem. You know, if there's no money to do anything, then the place will, uh, you know, just erode and decay. And, and that's what happens here. So it's, it's definitely risks to keep in mind. Um, and, of course, if you live alone, uh, like the house I built and a few places I've owned, there can be security risks as well, like thieves and stuff. You can't really leave the house by itself. You learn very quickly uh, if the house is unoccupied why Ecuadorians will often build a little guard house where they actually have the guy living, maybe with his whole family, right on the property, instead of leaving the place vacant for weeks, months, or years at a time. There's a reason for that. So, you know, all these type of risks. The fourth reason that I think you should not consider, just forget about uh, investing a lot of money in a property in Ecuador, is because the rental prices here are so cheap comparatively, right? For a thousand dollars a month, you can get a really nice property for rent here in Ecuador, right? Even seven, eight hundred can get you something pretty nice. Five, six hundred, something probably livable for you. Um, you can go even to three or four hundred dollars and you might get lucky in certain areas of Ecuador and get something that you consider uh, nice or even, or just livable. Um, and yes, of course, you go to the two, three hundred dollar range um, but of course that is, uh, that can be quite suspect, the quality of life that in those types of places. Um, but some, there's a lot of places in Ecuador that are just cheap like that. So you, you might be able to find something livable for you that, that, uh, at that price range. So rental prices are so cheap. Why buy it? And like you'll see on this channel, uh, I'm actually, people don't believe it, but I'm actually not selling any real estate. I'm not a realtor. I don't like that business. I learned a long time ago that it's not for me. I like businesses with a shorter sales cycle, right? Um, something that, you know, it, ring the register, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching uh, all day long, even though it's small, maybe smaller money amounts, I prefer that constant income coming in than the long sales cycle of, of buying and selling big ticket items like houses and stuff. It's just not for me. I'm a real estate investor. But I, I'm not a realtor and I, I don't actually sell anything on this channel when it comes to real estate. And that's probably why you're seeing someone say these topics uh, in this manner because I'm actually not selling anything. and I don't care and I, uh, <clears throat> if you buy or not. So this is from my own personal experiences. Uh, you, I think in this channel I emphasize in some countries you should rent and in some countries you should buy. And it, it depends on the opportunity. You know, you got to put your businessman cap on a little bit and and decide what is best for you at your point in your life. It's not always just buy something to say it's yours or whatever. Uh, I don't agree with that at all. The fifth reason why you should not buy big ticket properties in Ecuador is because I think there's a lot better opportunities if you're an investor uh, in Ecuador to 2x or 3x your money quite fast even on the cheaper properties that are available in Ecuador. Like the one I showed just last week on this channel, I'll put a link in the description to one I found in the same area where I built my house a couple years ago. Uh, you can buy a lot right now entering 2021 Ocean View for 
a little over three thousand dollars pretty pretty amazing so you know on these types of properties that's what this channel has to focus about because of what I just said you know the 2x 3x possibilities are much greater than than <clears throat> on higher priced properties so the sixth reason six yeah that's it the sixth reason I think you should completely forego forget about uh, higher priced properties um, because if you do have big money, and I get that, you don't want all that money sitting in the bank. You don't want it in cash, in paper that's slowly wasting away to nothing with inflation. I get that, right? But I think you have better opportunities in countries like the U.S. and Canada right now. I hate to say it, but there's better appreciation, right? And the laws protect landlords more. If, if you don't want to live there, but you have this money that you want to invest but you're, say you're moving to Ecuador or Colombia or one of these countries down here in South America, Brazil, amazing places to live, but not maybe that great to just bring a whole hoard of cash down with you. I highly suggest against that. And especially let other people know, don't let other people know that you have this huge amount of cash sitting around that you want to locate. Um, that's just asking for trouble in countries like Ecuador. Big trouble. So... If you have big money that you you know want to invest, I would suggest invest in the USA, in property up there. You have better appreciation, and the laws protect you more if you decide to rent it out while you're living down here in South America. You know you can evict someone in a month flat. I have a friend in Atlanta who has like 21 properties. By the seventh day of the month, if they haven't paid, he starts the eviction process. By the 21st day of the month, uh, they're out of there legally. You know, good luck with that in a place like Ecuador. You know, if you invest big money in a property, you rent it out, they stop paying. Huge pain in the butt to get them out. Months and months. And thankfully, uh, thank God, I haven't actually gone through that yet myself. Um, but uh, it's a problem down here. The laws certainly favor the tenants. So definitely something to think about before you maybe invest in a rental property in Ecuador. Yeah, to give you another example, a personal example of mine, uh, this is a positive example of me investing uh, where I went to college uh, in southwest Montana in Big Sky a couple years back, like 2018, 2017. I bought one of these condos, which is just like, you know, the bottom part of like one-fourth of this building you're looking at here, right near the ski hill of Big Sky, Montana. And... Uh, for a little over 200000 And now you can see what one for sale right now entering December 2020 is asking. Just a ridiculous amount. It's doubled up in two years, basically. Uh, now, will they get 475 I don't know. Pro that's asking a little high, probably. They might get 425 or 450 But anyway, it's a pretty basic, pretty smallish... Uh, not luxury for sure, two bedroom, two bath condo, but look at the price, look at the appreciation. So I mean, uh, especially in the Western US right now. So I, I definitely think uh, it's something to keep in mind uh, before you buy or invest big money down here in South America that honestly the appreciation, I know prices have already ran a lot in North America, but you can count on a much better appreciation probably in North America than South America and in these bigger priced properties. So because of all these six reasons or so that I explained just now, uh, I would really think twice before bringing big money down Ecuador. Just rent. Just rent. Leave the money. Invest in the U.S. and Canada where you have more protection. Uh, don't forget to subscribe below and hit the ring, and ring the bell and click the like button uh, to be notified of more videos just like this. Take care.